Jones, bottom to the top hoops, my man, the Black Elvis. What's up, E? What's good? We be back at it one more back game. Back at it, back at it. Yes, sir, man. Time to definitely shout out those sponsors. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Gotta do that. Mm hmm Gotta pay the bills. Gotta pay the bills. Yes, sir. So, this segment of the show is brought to you by 109 Embroidery for all your needs for embroideries, hats, jackets, t-shirts, Definitely the good 109 embroidery work right there. Good, good work. Go see my man Diallo, 107th Street, 3rd Avenue. They do great work. Big shout out to City Legends, man. Yes, sir. One of my sponsors, man. E. Jones, yeah. Jerry Ice holding it down, doing big things, big tournaments. Yes, sir. Catch one, you, it's already working, baby. They working. That's it, man. Definitely. CL's in the building. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor for this segment of the show, okay. the Parkchester Boys and Girls Club. Shout out to them, man, doing great things. Uh, teen Center, Northeast section of the Bronx, mm. servicing kids from the age of 13 to 19. That's awesome. Uh, been around for probably the past 10 years. Okay. Uh, Hidden Gem there in the Bronx, man, doing great work. So thank you to them for their support of the show. Definitely. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Thank you, man. We appreciate that. Yes. Hey, what's going on? This is E. Jones, bottom to the top hoops, sitting here with my man, the big fella, mm -hmm. Staten Island, mm -hmm. Queen's finest, <laughs> Abdul Sham Shadeen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Blessings, man. I've been knowing E a long time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Um, amazing story that I know, mm -hmm. uh, but not a lot of people know. Uh, we've been speaking off camera about coordinating this. We're here live yeah. from ATL. ATL, Atlanta. Yes, off sir. New York. Um, and, um, you know, I thought it was pretty profound that you, you've never really shared your story and you told me about the testimony that you right. gave at the church. And, right, and, um, right. For real. In front of like thousands of people, which I wasn't even fathoming I would even do. And, so. and to just add on to that, your personality, for those of us who know you, <laughs> is so big and mm -hmm. you're always so jovial and, and right. happy. But, you know, you, you talked about that being a little bit of a daunting task. Yes. Uh, in terms of sharing in that way. Yes. And the, the vulnerability to be able to tell your story, you know, the ups, the downs. and Yeah, and to, to, and to just accept who you are and mm -hmm. accept, you know, your wins and your losses and, you know, to be able to translate that. That's growth. Hopefully it grows and hopefully it helps others as you grow. It can help others, you know, grow as well. So now, um, as we start to get into the meat and potatoes of the show. Um, this story is one of them that I was kind of excited for, man, because <laughs> I feel like um, there's an obligation that we have, uh, myself and uh, Elvis with the platform, to be able to share information to help the next generation of players. And True. people don't know, man. They don't know a lot of stuff. No, they don't know a whole lot. Let's get to it. Yeah, let's go. So, born and raised Queens, New York, what part of Queens? Jamaica, Queens. Okay, South Side? South Side, Jamaica. Okay. Linden Boulevard, Guy Brewer. Okay, okay. Right. Respect to that. Uh, BJ Carter. Okay. BJ Carter. Okay. You know, true you know, Carter. True, yeah. true, that's my people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big, big things over in Puerto Rico. They, yeah. Uh, my man, True, yeah. did a, a great job over there. And True's back, he's back in, in New York now. Nice, yeah. nice. So, grew up in Queens. Well, Played. grew up in Queens till I was about seven. Okay. Then I moved to Harlem. 157th Street, Amsterdam and Broadway. Mmm, 157 like, so. Amsterdam and Broadway. I was on 144th between Amsterdam and Broadway. Right, so I had to go to PS29. Is it 49, PS49? That yeah. one that's on the top of the hill over there. I know exactly what you're talking so about. I to go to school right that's there. there uh, what you call it? Battlegrounds Park. Yeah, right there. Right, I know what you're talking right, about. Right, on by the Rucker almost. Yeah. On top though. Yeah. So we go there. I, I went to school there. Then play ball. He tried to get me to play ball as a little kid, young boy. How and tall were you around that time? When I was when I, when I saw, I was like 11, 12 years, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. um, I was about about six foot. Okay, okay. Six foot. One of the taller kids probably in the yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, about six foot, and um, I was like, ain't one of the parts of that. Okay. You know so you stayed in Harlem for how long? About four years. Mm -hmm. about, no, about, excuse me, about three years. And we moved to Brooklyn. 
Wow, y'all was bouncing around. Yeah. Okay. My mom, single mom, you know. Right, I get it. So we moved, she met, you know, met my stepdad. We moved to Brooklyn, St. John's Place, Eastern Parkway. Okay. But I was still going to school in um, in Harlem. I was going to St. Thomas Aquinas in Harlem, which was a private okay. school. It's time to go to high school. Right. So I had good grades coming out of St. Thomas Aquinas. Mm -hmm. I was like an A student. Okay. So I had an option, you know, I had Colin Hayes, got a little scholarship to Colin Hayes, you know, mm -hmm. which is a private school, all boys. Yeah. Didn't know nothing about it. But, I'm, you know, my mom put me there. But Pickman would always say, everybody who destroys you, you take a mental picture of that. Yeah. I'm going to show you this stat sheet. You look at that stat sheet. Two points, five rebounds. This guy, 25 points, 15 rebounds. And he's not even that good. He said, take this, put it on your pillow. Mm. Hold on to this. Remember this. And work. And I used to He's giving you motivation. Motivation. And I used to be like this. I used to be crying. And he would never, they, and, and I had no, my mom had no money for shoes. And my stepdad was funny style. So remember Danny Shays? Yes. White boy? Yes, Dolph Shays. Huh? Yeah, yeah, they played in the NBA and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Yep. Pickman got a pair of hand me downs from him that he had, had worn already, and they were a little too big for me. So I threw like four pairs of socks. Right. And I had a big check on it and all that stuff. And I guess some kids in the crowd was like, you got no. Goofy Nikes on, they too big for him. And he'd be like, no, I could have bought you a pair. But you need to, under, everything's gonna be a lesson for you. Wear those with pride. That somebody gave you something to help you out in your life, and you remember that. All this little stuff, a lesson that the little Jewish dude was showing me. And I, you know, he sent me the five star. Yep. Right? And I'm in five star, like, you know, I'm like five star basketball camp. I'm used to hear about, you know, all the everybody I know. Of course. Five, that's of like course. A, if you nice, you go to five star. Yeah. And, you know, I used to always want to see my name in the paragraph, you know, who played here in the camp. Yeah. So I went to five star in Homesdale. Mm -hmm. and John Sally was my counselor. Yeah. You know, we played with Georgia Tech and the Pistons. Yeah. And, you know, I'm like raw. I'm junior, coming up for junior year. Yeah. And seven and five. Seven and five. Seven and five. The two, we was like three and 20. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as wins, losses. Yeah. And he said, listen, get ready for camp. He said, but this is what you're going to do. You're going to be a waiter. I'm like, a waiter? I'm, and my mom, I'm like, yo, I've been in your house. You got money. I'm like, he said, no, no, no. You going to clean the tables. That's going to be how you pay your way to camp. I'll take care of everything else. But you're going to scrub these tables. When everybody finish eating, J.R. Reed, uh, Lonzo Morning, all stuff, finish eating stuff, you wipe the tables out, and you go run, run and get in the drills. Mm. That was my first. Humility. Yeah. And I kept saying, why are he doing this? Like, but it was a plan of his. So he said, what you're going to do now, you're going to like, you got to get more hungry. And you're going to have to work that 10 times harder than the next man. Mm -hmm. So I started saying, you know what? I'm in here. I'm not skilled, but I can run. Mm -hmm. And I can jump. You know, I had a, I had a good vert. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, first drill, Rick Pitino was doing hosting the drills. He was, a, he was at, uh, I think it was at um, Boston University. Boston University before he got a Providence gig, uh -huh. which was my senior year, the Providence gig. He's uh, doing the drills, you know, this dynamic coach. He's like, you know, you go up there, you tap the ball mm -hmm. ten times and then lay it up. Mm -hmm. I was tapping it, coming all the way down and going back up. He was like, oh, time out. That's not the right way to do it. Um, JRE, come show him how to do this. JRE was younger than me, like mm -hmm. a year two, maybe, I mean, maybe not younger, about a year behind me, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like, you know, cats are giggling. I'm kind of taking it personal. But you know, I went and sat down and I pay attention, I listen. And he's tapping tap. I said, oh, okay, I got it now. So I said to myself, if I could just rebound anything that come off the basket, go for every rebound and, and run enough just to get a layup, because I couldn't shoot really. Mm -hmm. But if I could just get away from them, get, get enough space to go and dunk the ball or something, I might get some attention. So if it rained, I had to do squeegee. You know, outside homes, I was on squeegee crew. Early in the morning, it rained. I got there, mop the, mop the court for everybody, got there and dry it. And then I played. So I had to have it for the whole week. The whole was like a week long. Mm -hmm. I did that, took my lumps, busted my lip a couple of times. But coach was like, hey, the kid, kid works hard. The kid mm -hmm. works hard. That was the thing. He worked hard. I left Five Star and went to Kutcher's Sports Academy, which is an all Jewish camp. I know Kutcher's. That's where Will Chamberlain and they all, all played in some of the. Of the, course. Uh, it, uh, was it the guy who passed away? They used to have that memorial game up there. Forgot the name. Stokes, Maurice Stokes game. Yep. Maurice Stokes game. So. I go there, he said, listen, you're going to be here for a month. All you're going to do, because he was, his kid, you know, he's Jewish, his kid's Jewish. His rich kid's Jewish camp. Yep. So now you're going to be out of the city. Mm -hmm. You're going to play with nothing but all the, all the councils were like 20-something yep. college, college guys. guys. Yep. So I just play ball every day with them dudes. And that's how I started getting better. 
Oh. And that's how I saw Ed Pickney, because he had just got that was the That was the transition of you becoming a basketball player. 100%. Because now I'm in a new environment, nothing but Jewish kids. I'm like 6'9 now, 6'10. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just, oh, I'm just play ball. And I, I watch these kids' parents play. Are you starting girl. to develop a love for the game at this love, point? Love, yeah. What happened was. Because you're getting better, too. I'm getting better, but what happened was I was driven. So I would never go to bed without doing 50 push ups. Mm -hmm. If I got up and took a piss in the middle of the night, I'm dropping doing 50. And Coach would say, I do, do 25 every night. I do 50. Because I always felt like if I just do 25, I'm going to be 25 with the, with the next one that's doing 25. So I'm going to do 25 more. So whenever I meet that person, I got an advantage on him. That's how I always thought. Right. So I would do is I take all the pictures from Street and Smith magazine, mm -hmm. Barkley, Jordan, Shelton Jones, Mark Jackson, all these guys that's in college and stuff doing their thing. And I would put them on my wall. And I would touch it every time I come to my bedroom, you know, and stand down and I go and touch the wall and so I had to do my chores and everything. And I touched the wall and whatever. And you know, that was my so when I went to camp, I took the pictures with me to to to, to the Jewish camp. It had my little corner, like almost like a little shrine. I had them put them, they was like, oh, this dude's black kid crazy, putting pictures of these um athletes on the wall. But I was like, I just need the piece of I was scared to lose that mode, that momentum, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm playing in the summer, grown men, and I'm learning. You know, I'm taking my I'm, I'm learning how to, you know, the, the, the rock the rock about baby dunk for Jordan. I'm doing all that. Mm -hmm. I got pictures of Ryan with that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm after, you know, I'm just getting it, getting it. Basketball, basketball, that's all it was. Uh. So when camp was over, we go back to the city, I kept saying, I can't wait till the season start, because I'm gonna see John Wiley, the dude that mocked me, and I'm gonna destroy him. That was my you know, it, it, it's like a switch came on. Yep. I was no longer a, a timid, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was more afraid not to, to fail than to be successful. Mm -hmm. I was more afraid to fail. Because mm -hmm. I used to get nauseous before every game, you know, my junior year, I'm like, oh. But that cushion situation allowed you to take that fear. Right. Started to practice, right. get better, mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to apply these skill sets, mm -hmm. turn it into confidence, mm -hmm. and now you wanted to smoke. Right. He was looking for John Wiley. Looking for him. Let me tell just let, just tell me, tell me what happened when you played him. That's all I want to know. I had 28. Because we got to get to college. But I had 28 and 20. Did y'all win? No, murdered them. And that was a team we never beat. They haven't beat that team in 10 years. But it was like a whole new day. He didn't know what to do with me. After the first couple, what happened was after the first two moves, boom, boom, the two dunks, he didn't want no more. It was over for him. And Patino, while we went back to the bench, uh, uh, excuse me, Patino, Evan Pickman, Coach Pickman was like, you got him. Mm. His heart is in the bag. It's over with. So now, this senior year, you start to do your thing. I'm doing my thing. So now, tell me how you get to Providence. Well, my first letter in college for for college opportunity was Fairfield. Okay. Fairfield's recruiting you. Right. You getting handwritten. Yep. And I'm you know excited. You, you yeah you excited you I'm going to Fairfield. Yeah. But then all of a sudden I got a letter from Iowa. Okay. Um, Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes and Purdue. So I'm like, this is really happening. Mm -hmm. So, and my high school coach, always a realist. He was like, okay, just keep doing what you gotta do. But the, the, I'm, I'm realizing now the gym is packed. I'm not, you know, I start hooping. I'm averaging 23 points, 14 rebounds a game, seven blocks. I'm getting a lot of attention now. This, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we moving through my senior high school. After my first five games, I'm murdering everybody. Like, who's this? Right. Because I went from 5.7 rebounds to 23 and 14 in seven blocks a game. Right. So, and I'm, you know, I'm doing it with guys, you know, I'm, I'm making some noise. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm getting all these letters and, and then um, he was like, hey, uh, Villanova's coming to watch you play. And Villanova had just won the national championship, you know. So I'm like, Villanova, no, excuse me, they was that, that, that year, 86, right? 85. 85, yeah, so they had just won. I'm like, Rolly Massimino, Lucan II, St. John's. You know, I'm like, oh, wow, I'm getting letters. You know, I'm like, I'm in heaven. And then um, I never forget, and this is a, a, a learning point. Duke University came to watch me play. So Duke is in the gym. There was um, a few other schools in there. And my first, first, uh, first quarter, I couldn't. You know, I was just all messed up. I was throwing temper tantrums, taking my mouthpiece, throwing it on the floor. I, stuff I have never done. Out of character. My high school was like, I'm not even gonna snap on you. You just watch. He said, look at, look at Duke. So I looked up, the dude, the coach looked at me, closed his book, and rolled out. And that's how he said, you just lost that Duke scholarship opportunity. 
So go ahead, go, go finish playing. And I sat there for a minute. I said, Coach, I need a minute. I sat there for a minute. I might have had two points, like four rebounds in the first half because of my, I got my own way. Of course. Duke is here and I'm, you know, I'm trying to show out. And you ain't giving the ball. And my teammate's like, what's wrong with you? You know, I, I lost it for a minute. Mm -hmm. Halftime came in, he ain't said nothing to me. He said, let me know when you're ready to play, you come out. Came out second half, I had 28 and 19 in the second half, but Duke was already gone. Mm. But my my attitude and what I what it looked like I was wasn't what they want for the caliber player they wanted. Why do you choose Providence? I choose Providence. When Rick Pitino came to my crib, I wanted to go to St. John's. Mm -hmm. Die hard, you know, Mark Jackson was. See what happens? Luke on the second, y'all don't push the right buttons. Uh, you know, Mark Jackson was my host, him and Shelton Jones. And, okay, Amityville Horror. Uh, yeah, they showed me around, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh, yo, you know, I had, you know, I had, a, I had a blast, I had fun. Mm -hmm. And Jason Williams, you know, Jay, Jay was, uh, you know, playing for Madison Square Broncos at the time. He was like, yo, they recruit both of us, let's both go there. Okay. So me and Jay, like, yeah, I'm going with Jay Williams, you know, that's my man, you know. Mm -hmm. Christopher Williams looking like him, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. So we over there. And Batino came to my house and I saw my mom's face. She was like, uh, so they, when he pulled up in the Oldsmobile, right? You know, I guess from the airport, whatever, they pulled yeah. him in the Oldsmobile. I don't know what he drove there, I don't know what he did. Him and uh, Stu Jackson. Yep. They came to my house. They came out looking like the feds, you know, had suits on and all that stuff. And I was sitting on the steps with Rizza from Wu Tang. Right. Me, Rizza, and I want to I wanna say, what's the boy's name? Or uh, Ghost, or whatever. Okay. Sitting on, you know, they like sitting and talking, and they bounced. They thought they were feds. So they like, yo, we got the cops coming here. I was like, nah, they coaches. Right. So I never, I never forget. They came in the house. My mom, you know, gave him a greeting, whatever. Had some for them to eat and everything. Mm -hmm. And he started talking. But he was so dynamic the way he talked. My mom was like, when he left, she said, you're going to Providence. So my mother made me go to Providence. I was mm -hmm. like, nah, I'm going to St. John's. She said, no, no, no. You go to St. John's, you probably going to graduate. You in the city. You know, you, this guy, something about this guy is special. So she I knew. I, it's crazy because I ended up going to Providence and I played in the Final Four my freshman year. Wow. Mm, so what's the odds of that? That's Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. Delray Brooks. <sighs> that that transfer from Indiana was Mr. Basketball with Danny Manning. Yeah. And Daryl Wright. Daryl Wright. Carlton Screen was my, you know, Riverside teammate. Um, and um, Marty Collin. Wow, y'all had a crew. Yeah. Man. Quentin Burton. Quentin Burton. You know Q? <laughs> Quentin yeah, Burton. man. Quentin. And then after that year, my sophomore year, Eric Murdoch. That was my roommate for three years. Wow, man. He died. That's my, that's my man right there. Wow. So you had a great career at Providence. Yeah, I had a, a great learning experience, too, as well. Just learning how to be a man, you know, mm -hmm. how, you know how to be on time. How many, how many years did Rick stay here? First, well, one year. Oh, wow. So we went to the Final Four, and that was like, he came in there and he was like, listen, I got an opportunity to coach the Knicks. It's a dream come true, but I'll stay if you guys want me to. I'm like, come on, son. What are we going to say? Right. He was out regardless. That was his wordplay. I wasn't, if he say no, he's going to hit out. He's like, I'm from Queens. What are you talking and, about? Yeah, yeah. So Stu Jackson went with him. Wow. Jeff Van Gundy went with him. Van Gundy was on your side? My freshman year was Rick Pitino. Check this out. Rick Pitino was the head coach. Stu Jackson, assistant coach. Jeff Van Gundy, assistant coach. Herb Sindek. Assistant coach wow. and Billy Donovan senior on the, on the, was a senior on the team. Wow! And and, Dor and Doris Burke, Doris Burke, you know NBA and all that. Yeah, was a senior on the girls basketball team in Providence. Wow! Yeah, y'all had y'all had legacy over there. Yeah, legacy man. So so, so now so. you go through your senior year. You wanted to feature players in the Big East and on your team. Yeah, um, yeah, I had Rick Barnes as a coach then. Yep. I had Rick Barnes my last two years. Yeah. Shout out to Rick Barnes. You meet him. We, we talk a lot now. Um, and um, that's when they had the first Big East versus the ACC challenge. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I'm only averaging like 20, about 23 minutes a game in, mm -hmm. in college my senior year. And um, me and Rick Barnes, didn't, we always bumped heads kind of mm -hmm. because I felt like he wouldn't give me the minutes. You know, I'm young. I'm like, I want to play. I need to. Uh -huh. And you know, I'm like in the post and that's all I could do. I couldn't step out. Right. So we played against Eldon Campbell and Dale Davis at Clemson. Yep. And he was like, going in and, and just play some defense and I'll pull you way back out. And Marty Blake, which is, you know, the scout, NBA scout. And all, they all sit there. And I ended up having, I uh, had 18 and 15 mm. in 20 minutes. 
And that changed a lot. You know, so, you know, now, then, I, then we go play Syracuse. I had 15 and 15 against Derrick Cohen. You know, then we played Georgetown. I had like nine blocks. And, you know, I'm just taking what opportunity gave me. Mm. I had no plays, you know. Got it off the, off 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 the land. Yeah, like, here it come. I'm going to get it. Right. I'm, I'm averaging, I'm shooting like 55% from the field. I'm aver- I'll get, I might get two touches. So I, I, I get was just off hustle. Right. I, I was nine, nine point something points a game and like seven point something re- and rebounds a game in 20 minutes, which was big for the Big East. Right, 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 right. As a senior. Yup. You know, we playing Georgetown, Alonzo Morning, Syracuse, Billy Owens. Sherman Douglas, Derek Coleman, Ronnie Cycle. You know, we playing against, you know, we need ball. It was, it was, St. John's, Blake Sealy. It was a beast. Yeah, it's a, different, it's a different thing. So tell me what happens after the season goes over. You go into camps. I got invited to Portsmouth. Okay. And um, they was like, yo, you go to Portsmouth, which is the top 100 seniors in the country. Yep. And it's an opportunity for the scouts to watch you. So, you know, I go there and um, I, I, me and Carl, me and Paco got invited. Mm-hmm. I don't think Marty got invited, but me and Paco got invited. And uh, shout out to Marty Conlon, who ended up being in the league for like 15 years. Yep. Journeyman. Yep. Hard worker. But uh, we went to Portsmouth in the first game. It was like, you get 20 minutes. So you can play the first half or you play the second half. Which one do you want? I said, I play the first half. And the first game, I had 22 points, 23 rebounds. Wow. And that just changed everything. That guy went to Chicago pre draft camp. Mm. Did my thing in Chicago. And you know, it's just funny how one thing I always tell anybody, opportunity not, you gotta be ready. Jump mm. through the window. Yeah. So you know, I'm going in there like, okay, I'm average, you know, I'm like, you know, I see all these guys, you know, big names in there and everything. You know, not the guys who's like lottery picks, but Yeah. And I, you know, the first game, everybody looking at me crazy, like after the game, I didn't know what I had, I just played. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting down eating, they like, yo, you see the stats? Look at the stats. And I'm like, 23 points, 23 points, 22 points, 23 rebounds. 20 now you go, you, you, you're becoming a pro. Right. What does it look like for you, NBA draft-wise? I had, Honestly, I didn't think I'd get drafted at all. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, these guys got big numbers. Mm-hmm. I had a good combine. Right. I had a good uh, Portsmouth, so right. my, but the buzz is on. Yep. You know, now, you know, I, you know, we coming from a big East school, you know, we had final four, we had made the final four my freshman year, so you know, they, they knew who I was. I know the story, but the yeah. viewers want to know. So they, you know, I had, after the final four year, we was on the map. In terms of the NBA draft, though, right. tell them about the draft. I didn't have a, really have an agent, I had a guy I was talking to, but right. I was like, he was like, you know, maybe, you know, free agency or yep. you know, something open up opportunity. Uh-huh. And at the time, before, the year before was three, three rounds in the NBA draft. Yep. Back then it was seven, it was three rounds. The Yakima is on two. I'm like, wait, knock down the two now. Three rounds guaranteed. Yep. Back in the day, was the first two rounds, you good. Mm-hmm. Now it was like first round, so I, you know, I'm like, okay, draft might come, I'm washing dishes. And my mom's crib, washing the dishes, whatever, I'm in the kitchen. And I'm hearing the draft, and I'm out, you know, I had the day watching TV, and all of a sudden everybody started yelling. And it was like, I'm like, yo, uh, the 51st, 52nd pick in the NBA draft, Abdul Shamsuddin, Seattle Supersonics. So I was like, it was quiet time. So like everything got quiet for me. It's weird. Like I, you know, I'm hearing things, but it's like clarity. And I'm like, oh wow. To my son, like, yo, he really called my name. And to me, that was like the biggest thing in, in the world for me, because that was a dream come true. And you was washing dishes. Washing dishes, like this. Did you take a moment? Did you go in your room? Did yeah. You cry? I, I, what's crazy was I, I didn't cry. I was just like, yo. This is you was bugging. Bugging, like, yo. This is really. They really said my name. <laughs> And first thing I thought, I was like, I'm going to get all the chicks now. Right. Because I was like, yo, they're going to be on it. And I started thinking, every chick that trying to shoot me down, I was like, yo, you're going to be sweating me now. Or to my mother. <laughs> we we got to stay on We got to stay on We got to stay on the kids. Yeah, we got to stay on the kids. Yeah, I got to stay my bad. You got to run that back. Edit that part. No, no, we ain't going to edit it. No, but it's real, though. Yeah, it's real. That's because, you know, it's like I come from nothing. Come on, bro. Talk my mom didn't give me no. I ain't had no bread. It was Speak like to it. my family wasn't like, yo, he go money while you college. That, I was getting nothing. Uh, you so no, when I got drafted, I'm like, man, you saw the money change. side. Yeah, take, I'm like, I can. I I'm official. Yeah, but because first thing I thought, my name, I was like, I can't be a whip. <laughs> yo, I'm gonna go down. I'm going down to um, down to um, um, Alby Square Mall. I'm going over to um, to uh, what's the little spot? Uh, not Orchard, where we go by the gear, you know, over Delancey. I'm going right. to Delancey, shout out Delancey Street. 
I want to tie the chop. I want to tie town. Give me a little gold chain. It's over. But that's that was the first thing. And then all of a sudden, that night, the phone was ringing crazy. My phone, my mom's phone was ringing. Like people called and I don't remember them. Seattle called me. Hey, Bernie Bickerstaff. Mm -hmm. Hey, Abdul, I ain't no chance today. Nice, you know, welcome to the organization. Well, you know, I'm just like, you know, he's like, listen, you did so well. You don't really have to come to rookie camp. You know, they had like a rookie thing. And right. I was like, nah, I'm going. You know, I'm like, nah, 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 I'm coming. I go there. Remember, remember Chris Monk? Of course. Stan Stanford, right? Yeah. They all, yeah, they they all there. Sweet Pete. Lloyd, yeah. Lloyd's out there. And I'm cooking. Because... What happened was they watched me play, but they didn't know, you know, they, I'm in the post, but now I'm out, I'm on the wing. You had that dance that New York, Yeah, that New York stuff. They was, I'm like, I'm doing it. Like, you know, I'm cutting, hitting them with the joint, you know, spin moves, I'm left-handed. So, you know, yeah. I'm, and I'm a Walter Berry fan, so I'm, I'm serving them hors d'oeuvres all day. You pull them out of here like this all day. Hey! Hey, here it is. Eat that. Uh -huh. And they was like, oh, this dude got more versatility than I thought. Right. And I'm watching Lloyd, and I was so impressed with Lloyd Dan because he was doing stuff so, you know, the dude that... Yo, he bounced the ball and went around with his hand and hit with, hit, like, passed it with his elbow. Lloyd, Lloyd, I don't care what nobody say. Magician. For the stuff he's been through, to still be that good is, in, is in almost uh, impossible. Yeah, yeah, it's like a miracle. So you kill a camp. Right. Because I want to get to the other side, the right. international side. Right, right. Kill a camp. Kill a camp. Mm -hmm. I go. Tonight, tonight was like, we went around, you know, they had Michael Cage, Sean yep. Camp. Yep. And I, I did all NBA Summer League with, with, you know, with Sean and, um, Gary played sometimes, but, mm -hmm. but I played with Sean. Mm -hmm. And me and him got a good bond then. Mm -hmm. And um, Summer League, we, you know, we're playing, and you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm, in, I'm playing with Sean Kent, you know, right. holding my own. And, you know, after the game, you know, some, one thing I should have did, some people, you know, he would shoot around after the game. Mm -hmm. I'm running with Sean Kent, so I'm like, we out. You know, we go, so we taking that, we had to wait for them. So we take what we do, we take the air out the tire of, of the team van, one of the vans. Cause they, they said, I said, y'all wanna stay the woods? Okay, we go to the air time, me and Sean take the air out the tire. Tire flat, we rolled out, they still stuck at the, at the, at the site. And I was doing, me and Sean Kent, this was a wild stuff. But I was having fun. Of course you were. You know, I have, I'm like, y'all, I'm in the league. You know, the seat, it's summer league, but you know, you get to see us with some of his jersey on, whatever. Yeah. So I got an invite to Paris to go play in this little tournament while I'm waiting. The agent's like, yo, the agent I had at the time I was like, yo, I got an opportunity for you to go, you know, make a little cash while you're waiting for this, you know, see what they're gonna do with veteran camp, you know, with this, mm -hmm. this contract. And I went to Paris, and Mike Jones, they played at Auburn. Mm -hmm. and he, had, he had left school early, you know, mm -hmm. wild out, but he, he was a very good player, 6'8". I played against some team he was on with a guy named Orlando Phillips. Okay. And I had um, 27 points, 29 boards mm. off the plane. And they said, yo, we give you 160,000, you stay. And that was, that was it. It was over. It was over. Was you didn't even city. go to vet camp. Nope. I was like, yo, you know what? Fuck 60. I, I yeah. need to go to Delancey Street. What? I need to go to uh, the like, Square Mall. It was like, you ain't got to go home. I said, no, 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 no. I got to go home. I got to get some gear. I got to go home. You know, I ain't got I ain't, I ain't, I ain't. They probably gave you a hat. Yeah, they, they, they gave me 30 stacks off, off in an envelope. Just Stash. like that. Cash. I gave my mom 20. Mm. Give my mom 20 stacks. I kept 10. And my idea was, okay, now I got, so that's 30, so I got 130,000 left mm -hmm. for 10 months. Mm -hmm. I get 13,000 a month. Right. So what I would do, I was like, I keep three, and I wouldn't, 10 I wouldn't touch, I wouldn't see. They'd send it straight to New York, you know, my bank in New York, Merrill Lynch. Mm -hmm. yep. That way I wouldn't worry about running through the money. Right. So I had, I had that presence of mind, like, okay. Mm -hmm. And that, 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 that was right. the start of it. So you played in Europe for how long? About 13, 14 years off and on. And the one thing about it, man, and we talk about this all the time, is you, you had an opportunity to make some good money off. Yeah. I had a, my first five years, I was, I was doing it. Um, I was like, tw by the time I hit 25, I had like about, about 300,000 in the bank. And I had just bought a house in Long Island, mm -hmm. which I was, I regret doing that now because I'm like, I'm never home. I'm only home for the summer. Right. So I would come home and go to NBA Summer League. I go over to Houston. I was there next, sitting right next to Robert Ori when he got the phone call for how much money he's going to give him for his contract. And when the Houston Rockers, you know, Seattle, blah, blah, blah. But I, but I was always like, I got Europe to fall back on, so it wasn't. I was never that and pressed, you had money. and I had some money, so I wasn't pressed. Like I got to make the NBA, I was never pressed. Like but that. How, how was it with people reacting to you? And, and we know you were generous. And now, generous to a fault. Like I had. Sometimes you could be good, too good natured to people. Like when you, when you have nobody pulling your coattail, like hey, don't do that, because family eats you up. Your moms, cousins, 
your man, your man, your man, your man, we was going to high school together, man, I messed up, I'm about to get evicted. Okay, I got you three bands. I'm about to do this, I got you this. And then all of a sudden, I ended up having a heart problem. I had what Hank Gathers had. So mm -hmm. I passed out, I was in Germany, and I was playing, well, they just won a championship. This was like, I was 26. We had just won a championship. And I was getting these faxes from all these other teams. I had some for the Clippers, they was interested, Celtics. Mm -hmm. um, I was getting faxes from, um, um, a team and we saw about 100, 1.8 million. So I'm like, oh, I'm about to kill him now for real. You know, and then a week later, I go to practice, I pass out, I go blind for like about two hours, and I end up having myocarditis, which is inflammation of the heart muscle. So, God bless the day with Conrad, you know, the heart burst joint, I had what he had. Mm. Hank Gaddis, but I, you know, I'm still here. You know, my, I, mine stopped right before the burst line. I got lucky. It's, 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 and then when that money, it's even that changed, the team was like, oh, you got the, the mm. team. I was home for like three years, living off of what I had. Ooh. But it's not the same when people's kind of, you know, but now that you have surgery, they take care of it. But back then it wasn't, and then overseas, they was cut up, like, yo, I got teams owe me 100,000, 80,000, all that stuff, you know, not paying me all you my ain't money. That. They ain't never getting that. So you realize people are who they say they are. And my last agent, my last good agent was Tobias Harris' dad, mm -hmm. Terrell Harris. Mm -hmm. And he got, yeah, he just got, I, I got sick right when I had him. And I um, came back <coughs> uh, two years later, playing in Spain. It was all right. I did all right. I did okay. Played in Germany, won champion, made an all-star team again. But the bread went from two, three hundred to eighty stacks, ninety stacks, if you get paid. So what is? What would you say the lesson in all of it was? I, I think, man, you just give it one hundred ten percent. But you can't. You got to live like this. You can't live for the day. You got to live for tomorrow. In my opinion, you can't live like I'm just because that when you're young, you get bread, you going day to day. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not thinking about five years from now, ten years from now. What what would you say to these these young student athletes who, and their parents, <laughs> who have these aspirational dreams about where they want to go, where they think they are? First of all, parents stop living through your kids. You ain't play ball, anymore. or you maybe you never play ball, but you can't. Some, some of these kids get burnt out early because the parent went, oh, you gotta be a pro, you're gonna do this, you're gonna, do, you're gonna go here. Let the kid experience what he's gonna experience. Let me be a kid sometimes. Sometimes it's gonna take a break, step back from basketball, live your life. Mm -hmm. I say this, as important as a scholarship opportunity is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't play at North Carolina. Everybody can't play at Duke, Syracuse, Big East, all these schools. It's a, it's a, it's a blessing, it's like hitting the lottery. I mean, percent. You got some guys who can really play ball and never get the opportunity to play D1 basketball. Mm -hmm. You got some guys who can really play ball and never touch a Final Four floor, NCAA tournament floor. So my thing is, you just do the best you can, be real with yourself. Have fun. Have fun and always think towards your future, invest in your future. You know right. what I'm saying? I always say if I could teach kids anything, how to invest your money, take care of your money. Mm -hmm. How to say no. Right. And how to, put, how to say no to yourself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You got to think. You get up. I can go. I can go grab that Land Cruiser, that brand new joint, for forty five thousand. You dating yourself, Land Cruiser? Yeah, Land Cruiser. <laughs> that's what I have. That was the, that was the Escalade back then. Right, Land right, 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 right. So but I'm gonna go buy me an Escalade. The Land Cruiser. They have the they have the Toyota and the Land, Lexus. Land. Land. Yeah, yeah, Lexus. But you know, you, you know, you go back now. You go that. You, you do all that. You, but no, no. How about get something used already? There's something that's reliable and put that twenty towards some real estate or something. So we're going to have a little fun before we yeah. wrap it up. Favorite basketball moment? Uh, being drafted to the NBA. Best game you ever played? Uh, I played against uh, Al, Al um, what's the boy's name from Celtics? Al, well, he, he's with somewhere else now. Al, Al, Al Horton? Al, Al Horford. Al Horford. Tito Horford. You okay. Yeah, yeah. Him and um, uh, Robinson, um, Keith Robinson, they swear to know the name. Mm -hmm. Played against them, I had uh, 30 points and 29 boards. Best country you ever played in? Paris. Favorite teammate of all time? Eric Murdoch. That was quick. Yeah, that's my dude. That's my day. Real dude, always, always, that was my favorite player to play with. One thing you would do if you had to write the story all over again? Different. What would you do different? Honestly, I wouldn't. I learned how to say no. Okay. Last thing you want to impart, impart on the 
on the kids that 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 are that are up and coming watching. If I if, I, if I'm you guys up and coming watching, I do. I work more than what I'm asked to work. If you say do 25 push-ups, do 30. If you take 50 shots, take 60 shots. The more you do, it's gonna benefit you. Stay in the gym, stay out of trouble. And the main thing is you do what your heart tells you. You know, give it your best. Because at the end of the day, when you give 110%, there's nothing to complain about. My man, Abdul Shamshadeen, Queen's finest, <laughs> representing New York City. New York City. The story is unbelievable. Shaolin. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, we appreciate you. Uh, yes, wish you the best of luck and, and, and all that you're doing out here in ATL, Charlie. Yeah, ATL. My man, right. E. Jones, Black Elvis, Bottom to the Top Hoops, City Legends. We out. This is Abdul Shamsuddin. You're watching from the Bottom to the Top Hoops with E. Jones and Black Elvis.